Hi, this is Valerie Aprahamian with Advocates for Angels, and today I'd like to talk to you about one of my most favorite quotes, if it wasn't written, it didn't happen. So what do I mean by that? So many parents will tell me that they made a request at their last IEP meeting, but they never received a response to their request and nothing ever happened. And my next question to that parent would be, did you make your request in writing or did you make sure that your IEP scribe documented your request properly in your IEP? And their answer is usually, I don't know, or I don't think so, or I'm not sure. Well, that's why your requests aren't being addressed properly and you're not receiving a response to those requests because it wasn't documented properly. And it goes back to my favorite quote, if it wasn't written, it never happened. Because when you make verbal requests and they're not documented appropriately, then it's just that, a verbal request. It's not a formal request unless it's documented. So I'd like to tell you a story about one of my clients. So this mom had a child, has a child, who was on an IEP, she was found eligible under a speech and language disorder. And the mom was concerned that her daughter wasn't improving academically, and so she wanted to request a psychoeducational assessment. So at several of her IEPs, she brought up the fact that she thought her daughter needed a psychoeducational assessment because of her lack of progress academically. And so the IEP team discussed her request, they, they talked to the mom about her request, and they simply documented in the IEP, parent inquired about a psychoeducational assessment, and team discussed, and the team decided that it wasn't necessary at this time because it was a young child and they felt that it could wait until and see how she would progress in the future. And so they basically uh, delayed the mom's request. They basically didn't respect the mom's request and they documented it improperly in the IEP. So uh, the way to get around this is to make sure that it's documented properly. So I asked the mom, did you ever write in an email that you were formally requesting a psychoeducational assessment? And she said, no, I didn't because I felt like I was asking for it in my IEP meeting. But it's a district strategy to do this, to not uh, document properly in the IEP what the parent was really re requesting. <clears throat> so it's so important to make sure that you follow up your requests in writing. Now, a really good strategy to use is providing a parent agenda prior to your IEP meeting. So what is a parent agenda? Um, so when you go to your IEP meetings, you know that the district will always hand you at the beginning of your meeting their parent agenda, the district parent agenda. Well, it's the district agenda. It's not a parent agenda. It's the district agenda. Well, you as a parent have the right to submit your own agenda. So that's your agenda, which call, is called, you'll title it, parent agenda. You'll provide this to your program specialist or your case carrier prior to your IEP meeting, your parent agenda. Now, your parent agenda is going to include whatever requests you want to make at your IEP meeting. So therefore, it's documented in writing. When you provide it prior to the meeting, they must address your parent request or requests, there could be several, and your any concerns you have, those things must be addressed at your IEP meeting. They must be documented properly because you've submitted it in writing. A discussion must be had by the IEP team. A decision must be made to address whatever request it was, and it must be documented in the IEP. <clears throat> so if that uh, outcome of that request at the IEP meeting is uh, not able to be made at the meeting because maybe it is funding that needs to be allocated that the team can't make that decision right there at the IEP, then they must document the district will respond to the parent request within 15 to 30 days in a prior written notice, a PWN. So a PWN is a mandated 
legal response that the district must provide you as the parent within 15 to 30 days of that request, documented request in the IEP, okay? So the PWN is gonna tell you that we received your request that you made at the IEP meeting dated such and such, and the district is approving your request or the district is denying your request. Okay, so now you know, you got your response to your request and it's either an approval or a denial. Now, if it's a denial, there are other legal appeal processes that you can make to appeal that denial. I'm not gonna go into those things today, but I'm gonna address that in another uh, video, Facebook video for you. And so we'll go over appeal in, at another time, which is, uh, uh, very uh, easy steps that you can learn, any pair can learn, and how to uh, get to the yes, because of course that's what we wanna do, right? Get to the yes, meet the needs of your child. So, you know, just, I want you to really take away from this that that mom could have easily uh, been, had her request um, responded to right away within 15 to 30 days had she known all i had to do was just submit uh, in writing one sentence i'm formally requesting a psychoeducational assessment for my child and boom prior written notice had to be done within 15 to 30 days and she was delayed a whole year and a half before her child was assessed after she came to me and asked me for help. And she was very upset and angry that that's all she had to do and that the, uh, her IEP team uh, was disingenuous in documenting her request improperly. So don't forget to develop your parent agenda prior to your meeting, give it to your program specialist, your case carrier. So at the meeting, they have to make those requests known, document them properly, discuss them, come to a decision, document the decision, or you have to receive a PWN within 15 to 30 days for that decision of your request. Okay, so I hope this was helpful for you and I'll be seeing you tomorrow because I'm gonna do these every day now. See you later, bye.